Hi guys, welcome back. So let's look back on England Six Nations, even though it's not officially over, it is effectively over. Maybe we'll get the last game in October, but certainly we can judge the positives and the negatives from this campaign. So in the first match, England were caught cold. They had a poor match, France was supercharged, even though England actually got a losing bonus point out of it, they were definitely second best. So the questions were asked, is there a World Cup slump? Which often there is, Certainly when England won the World Cup in 2003, they had a massive elongated slump after that. Um, but I think it's slightly different because a lot of those players in the 2003 team had just about gone past their peak. In this team, they were still in their peak. And in the next three games, we see that England are indeed still at that level that we saw in the World Cup. Um, they bounce back with a really hard-fought scrap, 6-13 against Scotland in those awful conditions. And we saw the kicking game was looking on point, and that continued in the next three games. Their set piece was very good, and again, that continued. And when England moved on to Ireland at home, they were comfortable winners, if not perfect in everything they did. They never looked like losing, and their defence looked absolutely amazing, absolutely on point. I mean, John Mitchell has done wonders with his England defence. Certainly, Sean Edwards have had, has had certainly lots of praise for working with the French defence, but the English defence looks equally as good. And again, set-piece kicking was right on, and against Wales, very similar strengths. The discipline broke down and nearly cost them the game, but until then, certainly their kicking, their tackling, their effectiveness at the breakdown, all the bits and pieces of the game were really on point, and they got three very good wins in a row, and are probably looking the strongest team in the Northern Hemisphere at the moment. Um, so let's have a look at the positives. So, they are in a position to win the Six Nations whenever it concludes. Um, I think it's too big to be canned, so I think we will get the end of the Six Nations. Whether they will win or not, I don't know, but as long as they win their last game, you know, effectively, hopefully with a bonus point, I think you'll definitely say a very good Six Nations for Eddie Jones. And they avoided that World Cup slump, and their whole starting 15 or 23, if you like, are performing well. They really are. Players like uh, Youngs, Ford and Farrell, the, the, you know, the playmakers of that team have had a little bit of a boost really. Youngs has started playing a bit better. Tuolangi's playing like he was in the World Cup. Watson's come back and looked fantastic along with May and Daly. Uh, the front five look very strong. Atoje is one of the best uh, second rows in the world. And they scrape by in the back row, uh, covering number eight, Curry doing a good job. Still don't think he's a long-term solution there. But with Billy Vunapola to come back in, you know, it's looking very, very tidy for their first choice team. And like I said, defence, a massive positive. They've used defence as a real attacking weapon and at times happy to kick the ball away in attacking positions because they think their defence will then go and get them that breakthrough, maybe with a penalty or a turnover. And the amount of dominant tackles has been Excellent, by far the most aggressive tackling team, I would say, um, in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, France uh, have been rivaling them as well, but I think their defence has been the absolute key feature. With the kicking, it's probably the options that are positive for England. Youngs, Ford, Farrell, Daly and Slade are all top quality kickers. And other nations just don't have as many. And if their kickers have an off day, England can, you know, they've got more kickers to share it around. If, say, Sexton and Murray have an off day, there's really not a lot else there to help them out. So it's that variety that can help them. Um, for example, if, if Farrell's carrying a bit of a knock, then Ford can take kicks at goal and vice versa. He's very, very versatile. And all good teams have good set pieces, and England set piece has looked like it's, it's moved up a little bit of a level. Maybe with the introduction of Proudfoot, the coach, the scrum looks a little bit stronger, a bit more powerful. The line out continues to be an excellent source of ball. A little bit worrying that Borthwick is leaving, but at the moment, certainly a positive. Now, it's not all perfect for England. There's definitely some negatives, some things I don't like. And first of all is, is the niggliness. Now England want to be niggly and annoying, which I get and I like. 
the idea of it, but they've gone too far. And I think everyone can see that the holding on on the ground, the goading of players when they make a mistake, I just don't like it. And it creates that animosity between England and other teams and fans, um, coaches, etc., that we just don't need. I mean, England has enough animosity between nations as it is, as you all know, and they're just not helping themselves. I don't think they need to. Um, and they can just need to tone it down a bit. I know what they're trying to do, but they've gone over the top, so hopefully they will tone that down. Uh, and this Six Nations, one of the other quite big negatives to me, hasn't really done anything to plant any succession plans, any development plans of players. The current team is in great shape. We know that. They're in their prime, they're playing great, fine. But we need one, two or three other players that are clearly coming through like other teams have been doing, and we just haven't had that. Eddie Jones hasn't wanted to try that. You know, he likes playing full-strength teams. Um, certainly places uh, like at eight, like at nine. Um, Manu's replacement, potentially, because he's not going to go through to the next World Cup, as he says himself. They just haven't appeared. Now, there's a summer tour, which traditionally you take new players on, but Eddie loves taking full-strength teams, like I said, how many new players will he take on that summer tour and how many will actually play, we will see. I mean, the only time he did it a lot was when uh, England players were away, away with the British and Irish Lions and he had to. So I'm just not confident he's going to take a lot of new players on that summer tour. And the last uh, negative, really, is, is Eddie's mouth. The guy's a fantastic coach, clearly tactically very astute. The players love him. You know, there's a good team atmosphere, but he just runs his mouth in the media when it's just not necessary. There's, there's nothing to be gained from that. And when he talks about refs or he talks about how they're gonna get at players or he says inappropriate comments. I mean, the RFU media team must be tearing their hair out at times. I mean, he does a lot of great things, but again, that could definitely tone down. Anyway, overview is considering how, you know, following a long World Cup campaign, England have bounced back very nicely and they continue to perform certain aspects of their game at world-class level. You know, it's not perfect, but you know, it really is, as I've said after the World Cup, the best England team that we've seen since 2003. I think there's no doubt about that. Can they kick it on? Can they move on? Well, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe they're at the level they're going to be, which is pretty high. I think they might need to add a few new players in if they're going to make a, a change or a progression. But anyway... So those are my positives, those are my negatives, that's my take on England Six Nations and where they're at. Please pop your comments down below and until next time I will see you then.